Alrighty, guys, it is time for the Sweet 16, every single game in this round of the tournament against the spread. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on today's video. Got a couple plays going tonight. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe gain a little bit of profit. Maybe the losing streak, the couple-day losing streak run uh, might continue. So I, I told you guys in the NIT video against the spread that I like Cincinnati. I was looking up the statistics more, and I'm looking at the free throw percentage of Indiana State. I couldn't quite, I, I liked it, but I couldn't quite have the balls to uh, to single straight bet Cincinnati plus four and a half. I uh, feel much better than alt spread. So took Cincinnati plus seven and a half, paired that with some NBA. Um, uh, what was the other game I took? Oh, the Ohio State game. Couldn't lay the points with Ohio State because the line got up to, I think, nine and a half before tip off. It's starting to get crazy at nine and a half. But I figured no way that that Ohio State blows this at home against Georgia. So took Ohio State money line, parlayed that with some NBA. So two uh, two team parlays. We'll see what happens. They're only a unit and a half a piece. I think I put out. I can't remember. That's besides the point. We'll see how those pan out. I'll do a recap on that and it, whatever the fuck in the next video. Not important. Sweet sixteen video today. Fuck all that. That's tonight. Hopefully it goes good. Uh, Sweet 16, my play of the year. You see it on the bottom of the screen. I already put a thousand, showed you the bet slip. Uh, well, at least the amount. I'm not going to show you the bet. Uh, already have a thousand on it, and I think the line might even improve a little bit to our favor. Uh, if that happens, I will probably be adding even more to this. And I looked back in my database, and I can't say this with, take this with a grain of salt. It's not a huge sample size, okay? I have never missed a five unit or more play in the month of March, but this is only a three-year thing, and I've only done it seven times combined. Um, so seven and zero oh on five unit or more plays in the month of March. Not a big sample size. I don't know how much importance you want to put on that, and that's fine, and I understand that. And I'm not going to come on here and claim it's some insane thing that I've done for like 10 years of betting. But 7-0 and in three years, man, and, and this one feels the best out of all of them. And it's not a five unit. I already put a 1,000 on it. I tell you guys, in the sport of basketball, basketball specifically, my unit is 100 bucks. So a $1,000 wager, I mean business. Hop on the website if you're interested. You can get a weekly package right now. That'll get you Thursday's plays, Friday's plays. Uh, it'll get you the Elite Eight uh, on Saturday and Sunday. That is a lot of college basketball. Been sort of struggling in NBA recently. The college stuff is still uh, for sure my sweet spot. And um, this play alone, a, a, a 10 unit play for me, I charge 30 bucks for a week of my picks. So that play alone, man, you will absolutely pay for a, a $30 week subscription. And it's not just that play. It's not like, okay, sweet 16, I'm dropping my nuke and I'm just going to sit back and hope it hits. No, I know that one's hitting. I want icing on top. I already have five plays on a list that I will be dropping as well uh, for the sweet 16. I'm going to go for a record here. I'm going to go for my biggest weekend yet in college. I like these games. I like how the, uh, the, the, the public opinion is opposite of mine. The trends are on my side. I found a lot of statistics nobody's talking about. I'm ready to rock and roll. And I actually like, I actually like how the past few days, I have really struggled. Look at the bottom of the screen. Look how much it's updated from maybe just two or three videos ago. I mean, we've taken a hit. I've thrown back quite a few of the profit we've made in, in March so far over the last couple of days. I don't want to come in on a hot streak of like 10 winning days in a row and then drop $1,000. I want to get some bullshit out of the way, have some bad beats, have some bad luck. It always happens. This is sports betting at the end of the day. Now I found the spots that I like, and these couple loses, these couple losses recently, these units that I've been throwing back, these, the, the profit that's been kind of starting to slide out of the window, it's going to look like peanuts after this fucking weekend. Elite 8, Sweet 16, this is where you make your money. Go back to my videos for the first round of the tournament. I said that specifically. I said if you can just simply escape that first weekend, the first round and the round of 32, if you can just get the fuck out of there at even even money, or maybe in a little bit of profit, excellent. You take that, you move on, you find those matchups in the Sweet 16 and the Elite 8, and that's where you absolutely hit the gas pedal. Don't do it in the championship. Be a little cautious in the Final Four. Be very cautious at the beginning of the tournament. Sweet 16, Elite 8, you find the right matchups, everything aligns, and this is why I have a 7-0 record. Nothing crazy. 7-0 on the big plays last three years, and I got a big one. I'm probably going to be adding more to my position. Hop on the website, danspicks.net. Grab a week subscription, 30 bucks. It'll at least get you access to this giant play. 
Um, when you sign up, just simply provide your phone number. I'll get you right on the client text list and the, t and the, and the pics will be uh, texted directly right to your phone. Boom. Every single day, a daily text. And uh, yeah, just really excited to, to get back to college here. It's been a weird couple of days trying to find some value in NBA. NBA has been a little bit chaotic as we get closer to playoffs. Some crazy stuff happens. People, this is where people start saying the NBA is rigged because the NBA, of course, they want Steph Curry in the playoffs. They want LeBron. Where are the Warriors? Where are the Lakers? They're right on the fringe of making the playoffs. So there's a, there's just some things right now in the NBA um, that are fishy. But hey, that is what it, it is. What it is. That's a whole different animal betting that stuff. You got to have a whole different handicap and a whole different approach to bet the NBA. Let's go. It's time. My Twitter link, or not my Twitter, my TikTok link in the description. I'll have free plays out Thursday through Sunday on college basketball completely for free. Don't have to pay for anything. You just got to throw me a follow on TikTok. And my SoBet link in the description as well. Uh, you can sign up for SoBet for 10 bucks for an entire month. You'll have access to 60 professionals on there, and those guys smoke it. I'll put some screenshots on the screen um, of some of the pros over on the SoBet platform. I am one of the pros on SoBet. I do a daily pick over there but I do have access to everybody on SoBet. Uh, so if you're interested in, in not only my daily pick on SoBet, but all these others pros, they're full card. You sign up for 10 bucks a month, you get their full card, all their VIP plays every single day. Uh, so you can check out SoBet if you're even interested in that. But I'm going to find some paper here. This is good enough. Sweet 16. This is awesome. This is, you know, 15 out of 16 favorites won the last round. Never seen it before. I think we're going to get a little bit of chaos here, man. I think we're going to have some good competitive basketball. I think coming down to the wire, anything goes. And um, you got to be careful where you're putting your money. I found my spots, but I, based on what I've seen, man, the public consensus that I see on Twitter, on TikTok, comments here and there, I don't know. I think people are going to get burned. I'm ready to rock and roll for this weekend. Game number one is Clemson in Arizona. This might be one of the games that people get burned on. Not because it's an upset, but this is a this is a, it's an ATS video, okay? Against the spread, and the spread right now, at least on FanDuel, is seven and a half. Seven and a half is a lot. Clemson doesn't lose many games by eight points. That is a lot, a lot of points for a Sweet Sixteen game. Arizona, man, I do fear that Arizona, the front court, could be pretty dominant here, but PJ Hall. You never know if Joe Girard just goes nuclear with three-pointers. Um, I would take a look at maybe the over in this game, but the line the line is already baked in for that at 152 and a half. So that's that's pretty high. I mean, that's that's 76 apiece. That's that's quite a few. Um, Clemson's pretty sound. I just like Clemson's fundamentals and I like Clemson in an underdog role. I don't always love Clemson to lay points with. But look how they showed up uh, in the regular season against some of those ACC teams. This is kind of where I like them, getting seven and a half points. Now, based on where this game is getting played on the West Coast, significant disadvantage. Um, I think Arizona's, I think Arizona and, and, and Purdue are, are very similar in, in the fact that that first round and maybe even the second round, but that the, those early games, that's where they had the pressure because of the previous upsets in the school history. Now they're kind of they're kind of past that. Now it's like okay, fresh start. A whole week went by. Now we're in it. Now we're playing good teams. There's no more you know gimme games or you know we could possibly have some historical upset. That's out the window here. But seven and a half is too much. I think it's too much. Does Arizona win this game? You know I don't know. I can't even say for certain. I saw too many games and too much inconsistency from Arizona to where I can definitively say Arizona is going to take care of business here. I, I, what are we going to get out of Arizona? If they play like they played in some of those regular season games, they're going down. I think Clemson's more than capable here. I think this is a very close game. Um, I'm going to be taking the points here. If I have to bet this game, Clemson, Arizona, seven and a half. You force me to bet this one. I'll take the points. San Diego State, UConn, the line has moved. Um, it's up to 10 and a half. I can't remember what it opened at, but I I definitely remember nine and a half or even an even nine. San Diego State, man, they've played nobody. Okay, everybody's played two games up until this point. Okay, well, UConn just beat the absolute dog shit out of an actually pretty good Northwestern team. Don't worry about that final score. Northwestern kind of came back at the very, very end. That game wasn't even close. Uh, Northwestern, 
they're they're pretty good. I mean, look look what they they gave fits to Purdue all year long, and every every time they play Purdue, they're solid. They played in the Big Ten. I think Northwestern solid. And UConn just ran through them like a hot knife through butter. San Diego State, much 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 easier opponents. Now ten and a half. We got to realize if you're going to bet UConn against the spread, you got to basically assume a point and a half, two points extra is baked into the line just based on how public they are, how dominant they've been. But this is a team with a coach that does not care uh, about two minutes left in the game, two seconds left in the game. He's going to yell and scream and want perfection all the way to the end. That's a, that's a good thing to have if you're going to be betting that side. Uh, th- this, is, this is just a clear pass for me, I think. Um, if I can dig up a little bit more, maybe I'll have a little bit of money on this game. But I'll just tell you guys blindly right now, I don't plan on betting uh, San Diego State and UConn against the spread here. Ten and a half. I think the number's fair. I think UConn wins the game. I think they win it comfortably. I don't trust San Diego State's offense. And how long can your defense, like, it? it's basketball, okay? So you're not going to hold the other team to zero. It's not football where you could win a game 10 to 6, 10 to 7, 13 to 10. It doesn't happen. Um you want to beat UConn, you're going to have to score at least 75. I mean, bare minimum 75. San Diego State can't do that. Um, yeah, I'm not buying it. I'm going to lean UConn here, even though it's public, even though they're the big favorite, even though it's a big line, even though it's Sweet 16. I don't care. The game's in Boston. Get the fuck out of here. It's going to be a, basically a home game for UConn. They're so much better. Now, one little scoring drought that San Diego State has been doing all year. They, they have one bad stretch where they can't score in five or six minutes. This thing's done. So I'm going to lean UConn. Bama, UNC, um, everything points to UNC except the line and except all the money on UNC. Let me tell you right now, 91% of the money is on the Tar Heels. How is the line three and a half? How? Uh, Because Alabama plays zero defense. They did not play the same opponents all year. I think UNC has better uh, experience. I think they have better defense. I think they're better in the clutch. Three and a half. I mean, why are the books continuing to let money come in on the Tar Heels without at least bumping this thing a little bit? Can we at least see a four and a half, a five and a half for a little reinsurance that UNC is the right side? If I'm betting this game, I'm on UNC. I like UNC in this game. I think it's a great price. Three and a half is is more than fair. I think that's a wonderful price to bet the Tar Heels in this spot, but just because it's, and I know the public favorites, the casual morons that just woke up last weekend and said, eh, I don't know. I'll just take the good teams. I'll take Purdue against the spread. I'll take that UConn team. Everyone talks about them. Those people cash last weekend. The books got fucking annihilated. I can't believe they're in business. I mean, they got fucking, I got to watch what I say here on YouTube, but they got fucked up. Are they going to take another ass whooping? I don't know, man. It's It feels it feels like low-hanging fruit. It, it just it doesn't feel right to me. Three and a half. UNC, wildly better. Better D. Better fundamentals. A better balance. Good in the, good in the front court. They're good, good near the rim. I mean, if the threes aren't falling for Bama, they're screwed. Three and a half? I don't know. I'm going to still lean UNC. I guess the public does win some. Illinois, Iowa State, flip a coin, right? Flip a coin, basically. Uh, I disagree. I don't know. I mean, we got conflicting styles. This one's a hard a hard game the best to guess. Look, the public consensus, the social media consensus is Illinois. Everyone's fallen in love with Shannon Jr., Damask, Hawkins. I like the Illinois team. Um, but you guys have seen it now for a couple of weeks. I fear when they have to play a good defense like Iowa State with the lack of a true point guard. Boy, they could be turning the ball over a lot. And I just don't know in the clutch if Shannon Jr. is enough. Um, is he going to drop 25, 28 points? I mean, I I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. Now, they should have the rebounding advantage a little bit. Iowa State, man, I when I think back to Iowa State, I don't just think of like, oh, they won the Big 12 tournament. And by the way, by the way, Let's remember back to when I went over the tournament, the, the conference tournaments. I gave you guys Iowa State at plus 430, a 4X your money on Iowa State to win the Big 12. So hopefully you guys took that. Uh, but that's a different conversation. For this game, 
I think Iowa State's more tested. I like the way they played uh, those Houston, they, those two Houston games, the game at Houston, and then of course the the neutral. Um, it was basically a home game for Iowa State with all the fans there. But the the Big Twelve championship game, you face a, a Houston team and you play like that for those two games. Not to mention the game at Iowa State. I don't know, man. If they can get by Houston like that and, and play Houston three times in that nature. I'm not scared of Illinois. I think this is a, a, a probably a spot where you want to sell high on Illinois. They've looked so good. They've actually made it pretty far. Most people didn't even have them coming this far. They look really good. And you can take the money line with Iowa State, take the points out of this thing. By the way, if you do like Iowa State, if you're going to bet them, don't you fucking dare lay that point and a half. Don't do it. And if you're going to bet Illinois, you better fucking take those points, even if you're getting a point and a half. Take the point and a half. Take it if you like the underdog. Uh, if you like Iowa State, go on the money line. It's minus 118. That's more than fair. I'm going to take a more cohesive overall team uh, over the team that seems like they're, you know, offensively doing okay versus lesser opponents. I mean, Iowa State's played some pretty good teams here. Getting into Friday's games, NC State and Marquette, a six and a half point spread. You guys got to let me know in the comments. What do you think of Burns? What do you think of this NC State team? I mean, is it crazy that they've made it this far? A lot of people are saying they're going to give Marquette big problems internally. Rebounding, the sides inside, Diara and uh, Burns in there. And I agree with that. Is that enough? And it is an inside presence with NC State enough? I feel like this is going to be a very competitive first half. And then Marquette blows the thing wide open. And I think... I think if Marquette is able to blow this thing open, and by blow it open, I mean like go from basically a back and forth game to like an eight or a nine point lead. I think once they establish that margin, I do have a feeling that NC State might just kind of hang their heads and go, we had a hell of a run. We're lucky to be this far. We've come to an end. And, and even if there's only like five minutes left in the game, I think that winning margin could explode. I know everyone likes NC State. So does the public. 67% of the money's on them. I'm on Marquette here. Uh, I think I think NC State has vastly overachieved. I'm not hating on the program. I, I almost want to see them win and advance, and it's a fun story, and at least some team is pulling off some chaos. This whole tournament, correct me if I'm wrong, This so far, this March Madness tournament sucks. I mean, there's there's very little chaos. We had the Oakland thing going on, but then they got just destroyed. We had Duquesne, and then they got destroyed. There really hasn't been much chaos. It's like, oh, another big fucking public favorite won again. Like, I'll just shut the fucking TV off. UConn wins again. Purdue wins again. UNC wins again. Houston wins again, you know? Uh, Duke wins again. I, I kind of want to see NC State continue this thing. Just so we have something, you know, some type of storyline. But unfortunately, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm just going to go with the, the the team that is the better overall offense. I mean, how much brain power does it take to draw up some type of play to take this inside game for NC State out of the equation? I don't trust NC State with turnovers as well. Uh, they were bad in some of those regular season games um, with turnovers. I think Marquette might be able to win this game purely in transition. I'll lay the points with Marquette. Gonzaga Purdue. So this is the one that might get people, I guess. Five and a half points. It seems like a short line. Seems like a good price for Purdue. Uh, I know Purdue already beat Gonzaga this year, uh, but it was just a wildly, wildly different team. This Gonzaga team, man. Let's talk about night and day teams. So NC State, night and day. Ohio State was night and day. Uh, beginning of the year, end of the year type teams, right? Uh, there's a couple more I'm forgetting. Illinois. Uh, well, they were kind of good the whole time. That's besides the point. What I'm saying here is this Gonzaga team, you're going to really have to beat these guys. You're really going to have to beat these guys. Now, is EK big enough to give Edie not problems, but to not even neutralize because it's, it's Zach Edie. He's going to do work against Gonzaga. Is EK big enough to... Slow down Zach Eady to a degree to where Gonzaga's still in the game. And I also think, and this might sound cheap, but I really do think this game is up to the, the officials. 
And same with that Iowa State game, because if the if the just before we continue here with these games, if the refs are fucking all over Iowa State and they're just blowing the whistle, blowing the whistle, and Iowa State can't play that ferocious defense. Same with Houston, man. When you're a defensive team and you're not a great offense, Houston, Iowa State, if the if San Diego State against UConn, if the whistle is tight and these teams are unable to play suffocating defense because every time they fucking breathe on the guy, there's a whistle going off, then it then it's going to be brutal for a team like Houston to beat Duke. You know? It's going to be brutal for a team like uh, Iowa State to get by Illinois. Um, So that's a very interesting aspect. If, if EK isn't allowed to lean on Edie a little bit, then it's going to be hard for Purdue not to not to cover the spread here. If this game is kind of allowed just to be a good, solid basketball game between two teams and the and the refs just let the players decide this thing, maybe Purdue survives. Maybe. Lawyer hits a buzzer beater or something. Five and a half, I will take the points with Gonzaga. Better fundamental team, more of a cohesive unit. I don't trust... I don't trust Lawyer and 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 Braden Smith and I, I I don't trust these guys against against Gonzaga, man. I'm gonna take Gonzaga here in the points. Duke Houston just touched on this. This one, this one comes down to officiating uh, to some degree as well. Um, this is men versus boys, and by boys I mean nail paint and pussy ass boys, straight up. Duke is 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 fragile, is soft. Um, they need to, I mean, if if you're looking for Duke on the off days, if you want to know where they're at, they're like messing around in the ball pit, at like the local kids' playground. Like they're in the ball pit, like, you know, with their sippy cup, um, shit like that, man. Painting their nails. Um, weird, fruity team, man. Don't fuck with it. And uh, this Houston team is, is men. These are grown men. They, they, these are dudes that would fuck you up. You you go and play this Houston team in New York City just on some some, some you know some park court you're getting fucked up you're getting fucked up and a foul a foul means blood real shit real pickup basketball if the refs allow it um it's going to be very hard for Duke to stay in this game in my opinion and a four and a half point spread I think is a result of maybe Duke having the game of the year so far I mean Duke in the last game. JMU is no slouch. I mean, it's not like they were a total pushover. They beat Wisconsin pretty handily, and Duke, they fucked them up. They fucked them up. They look damn good. Um, I do think that performance is hard to repeat, and on the same token, I think Houston, um, you know, they're kind of lucky to get by a and I thought when that game went to overtime, it was like, okay, well, Houston's eliminated. There's the first number one seed. See ya. Um, and you always worry about Houston's offense as well at times. Maybe their offense goes cold. But, uh, you know, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the full season of statistics, Houston off of these games where they kind of get scared or almost lose or lose, the few that they lose, they're usually pretty good the next game. Duke, and eh, maybe Duke's catching fire here and getting four and a half points seems attractive. The public likes to think so. The splits right now, eh, approaching 70% of the money. On Duke in this game, interesting. I'm going to lean Houston here, and um, yeah, hopefully the officials let him play. Creighton, Tennessee, to end off the Sweet 16. Now, I'm going to tell you that guys this right now. Okay, now this is very important, and this is going to save a lot of you guys. Um, trust me. The end of the Sweet 16 round is a Friday night game. It's at 10 o'clock Eastern on a Friday night. Okay, what does that mean? At least for us sports betters, a lot of us might have a drink. Maybe some of you guys that aren't buying my picks for the Sweet 16 will be down money. <laughs> we'll all be chilling, all my, me and my clients. But if you're down money and you got one game left on Friday night to finish the Sweet 16 and you're trying to get your money back, don't. Don't do it. I come on here, I talk about bankroll management and being smart. And it's hard to take me seriously based on my last three days. I hope you take my entire calendar year and even the football season included, to, to, to have what I'm saying carry a little bit more weight. Don't chase your money on this game. If you if that Houston game ends or, or whatever, the point, if you get to Friday night and the last opportunity you have to bet the Sweet 16 round is Creighton and Tennessee, 
I just want you to be very careful. I think this is the hardest game on the board to pick. I think it's going to be a very good competitive game. I like the inside size of Tennessee. I like Cockburn on the inside. I like the three-point shooting of Creighton. I like the experience of Ziegler. I like Dalton Connect. I think I think this is a great game and a great matchup. And 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 to risk too much money just because you maybe had a couple frustrating days is the wrong thing to do here. There's going to be more opportunity on Saturday and Sunday, and I just recommend you move on. Uh, maybe live bet the game. Maybe just simply see who gets off to a hot start and then take the underdog with a bunch of points in your back pocket, assuming at the end of the game it's going to be close. Maybe do something like that. In terms of a handicap here to finish out today's video against the spread, I don't know, man, because Creighton beat UConn, but Creighton also lost at home to Butler. Tennessee looked sort of mediocre in their last game uh, against Texas, but Texas is actually pretty good, and I like the way that defense looked for Tennessee. I think Tennessee has the right size on the inside, so Kalkbrenner isn't so dominant. Um, I think a lot of things are offsetting here. Um, the money splits, not terrible. A slight lean of, to Tennessee here. I don't know. I think we have the more clutch players on Tennessee. Creighton was extremely lucky to survive Oregon. I think I'm going to trust the defense from Tennessee a little bit more, and I also don't think they're going to shoot the same percentages. They had a very tough game shooting last game, and I just don't think that's going to repeat. It's going to be close. There's no way I'm laying points here, but the money line for Tennessee is at minus 146, at least for right now, before I do a deeper dive into this game, I'm going to look at Tennessee on the money line. Maybe it takes a, a Dalton connect buzzer beat or something, but I'm going to go Tennessee somehow, some way to win this game. And that is the entire sweet 16. I'm pumped, man. I'm going to have a, I already have a, quite a, quite a bit of money on there. I will be dropping more. I'm actually going to drive to the casino. I've been using FanDuel a lot, but, um, Got some more big bets to place on this round in particular, and I'm just going to take cash to the casino uh, to avoid kind of having this stuff on the record. You know what I'm saying? Um, my bigger bets, I just drive. I'm lucky enough to live, you know, a 25, 30 minute drive from a casino. So the big stuff that I don't want Uncle Sam to know about, $100 bills uh, get placed on these things and unanimously over at the casino. Uh, guys, let me know in the comments, what are your favorite picks for the Sweet 16? Like that comment section up. Give me a couple upset picks. Throw a parlay in there for fun. See if you guys can hit something cool in the comments. Uh, of course, like the video and subscribe to my channel. And uh, please, man, pay 30 bucks. Get a week of my picks. It's been a rough couple days. No better timing to come off a little bit of a cold stretch and absolutely flourish in college basketball. NBA has been weird lately. Fuck it, man. We lost some money. It happens. Uh, yeah, Sweet 16, Elite 8. It's no joke. It's going to be an awesome weekend. See you guys in the next video.